In this week's grind episode, we're gonna be talking about wade fishing gear and getting set up. Stay tuned. So the water temps are up high enough, they're warm enough where everybody who doesn't wade fish in the winter time is now starting to get out of the boat and start to wet wade, is what we call wet wade, where you're not wearing waders, um, and basically you're getting in the water almost like you're swimming, uh, but instead obviously you're wading. Um, and so a lot more people are doing that. Those water temps have come up high enough uh, to where folks can get out and wade. And so I just wanna run through a couple of things um, that help you be more efficient, more effective, and they work for me, right? In the winter time, I wade fish predominantly in the winter time, uh, but also wet wade, you know, certainly in the spring, summer, uh, with my kids when I take them. Uh, but obviously this is gonna be a, a more geared discussion towards wet wading. If I was wade fishing in the winter time, I'd have a lot more uh, base layers, waders, you know, your guide jacket uh, or your, your Gore-Tex jacket, all these different things to keep you warm alongside the actual gear itself. And so I'm just gonna run through bait, I'm sorry, boxes, belts, shoes and some other nuances uh, here um, that you need to make yourself again more efficient wade fishing. All right, the first thing I wanna talk about is your feet and taking care of your feet. And so I have two wade uh, boots that I predominantly use. If I'm making longer wades, uh, if I'm gonna you know, fish all day, I'm definitely gonna go with something that gives me a lot more support a, a lot more functionality, uh, like a Sims flat sneaker, right? Super light, again, a lot more rigid on the, on the bottom. Uh, it has a great sole, has some arch support in there. It's more or less like wearing a shoe, um, but uh, in the water. And if I'm making long wades, if I plan on fishing all day, I will definitely wear my flat sneakers. But if I'm, which I almost do about 80% of the time, uh, is actually make short, quick wades in the morning, taking the kids out uh, before the sun gets up and it starts roasting out there uh, during the sp late spring, summertime. And so with that, I'll go with just a simple booty, a simple side zip booty. Uh, you can put it right over uh, your foot. It doesn't have, again, the rigidity of like a hard sole. It doesn't give you arch support. It just gives you quick functional access uh, to put something over your feet, give yourself some protection. Um, but again, I use these for quick wades. What happens and a reason for that is because I can put gravel guards uh, when I'm wearing my flat sneakers to prevent a lot of that kind of small crushed shell from getting down in your feet uh, and then causing some discomfort throughout the, the day. You'll have some blisters, you'll have some kind of sore spots at the end of the day. Um, and also too, with these, it doesn't give you that, right? So if you're kind of fishing in some tidal areas if you're fishing around, again, kind of some soft shell or something like that, you're definitely going to get some shell, some sand certainly kind of come into your boot itself. And so that, again, for longer periods of time, that may build up and it just give you great discomfort throughout the course of the day. But if you're making those two, three hour wades, quick trip in the morning, working a beachfront, working a quick flat, working, you know, whatever it is, definitely the, the booties are the way to go. Uh, these are made by Chota. I don't even think they make these anymore. Uh, I've had these, I actually have two pair, and these have been great. These have been great. Um, they're a good high quality booty, if I remember right, they were like 79 bucks at the time. I've had these for at least a decade. Um, and so if you invest in good boots, then basically you're gonna take care of your feet and your feet are gonna take care of you the rest of the day. And so I would highly recommend like a Sims, they make like a, a boot that's very similar to this where it has a lot of flexibility. And if you're gonna step it up and plan on making weights, you can certainly wear these in a the winter time as well. You just wanna size up if you're gonna use these in the winter time. But if you're looking to make longer weights, have a lot more comfort, a um, lot more protection again from shells and, and sand buildup in your feet and like your socks, um, definitely go with the Sims flat sneaker. Again, I know Sims isn't the end-all be-all, but they make great quality products. 
Um, and then if you have anything, obviously you could send these back. Not sponsored by Sims in any way, shape, or form. Really believe in their products. But these chotas have been money, but I spent the money to get them. And so, again, you find a brand that works for you, has some high quality components. The zippers have never failed. Again, they're kind of like a, a hard plastic, if you will. Um, not a whole lot of wear and tear on the side. You see a little bit of ripping, a little bit of tearing, stuff like that. But for the most part, these have held up very, very well. Um, so again, spend the money, get yourself some good shoes, some good wade fishing shoes, because at the end of the day, your feet are gonna take care of you, and now you can focus on fishing and not your feet. All right, the next, I'm gonna stand up uh, for this in here in just a sec, but the next is your wade fishing belt. So you go from your boots to now your belt if you're looking for comfort, right? And so if you wanna have the maximum amount of comfort you can, to fish all day, not have a lot of wear and tear on your body, taking care of your feet, number one. Second is getting a really, really good quality belt. Okay, so the belt that I use is made by Hookset Marine Gear. Uh, and so I'll absolutely love these. So Chris Yost, I bought this belt back in like 2016. I was living in Florida. Chris Yost, the owner of the company, uh, he reached out to me. Um, and I, I bought this thing uh, full price. And so I wanted, the reason I wanted to do that is because I wanted to fish it hard uh, for years uh, to see if the durability matched the price tag. That was the biggest thing is, this is not a cheap belt in any way, shape or form. Uh, actually, the belt itself, so this is a six inch, and you can see the inside, the back side of this. So this is where your back would go. Um, this is a six inch and it's made from that kind of canvas strap material that you would see on like boat slings um, or boat hoists as they pick up. So like in the marinas of South Louisiana, when we would go to the marinas, we would basically you pull your boat up, they put these straps underneath, it would lift your boat off the trailer. This is literally that same material. You talk about damn near indestructible, it definitely is, but it has a lot of pliability. I have to be honest, uh, I might give this thing a rinse once every five trips, um, but really I don't rinse it much. Um, and it's held up very, very well. Again, not sponsored by Hookset in any way, shape or form, but I wanted to run this thing through the gauntlet and it's held up very, very well. Okay, so the reason I say price tag, right? So first off, you would just buy the belt and they make two different sizes. I wanna say the four inch and the six inch. This is the six inch. Uh, again, a hard canvas kind of um, strap here. And what happens is, is all the D-rings and all the buckles are stainless, stainless steel, right? And so talking with Chris and getting a little bit better understanding of their product is that they wanted to build a belt and all their products to kind of build the last. And he's like, dude, that's really not a great business model because you're kind of putting yourself out of business because Frankly, you can spend the money. I think this is about $80 once it was all said and done uh, to buy this belt, but you pretty much buy one for a long period of time, almost damn near life if you don't fish a whole hell of a lot, right? Uh, but again, you can see in the, um, in the plier sheath right here. So the plier sheath, pull that out. So I got my Danko pliers. What I do is I put that in there. This is the only thing, I'll talk about the only downfall. But in this plier sheath, on the bottom, you can see all the D-rings are stainless steel. Again, I rarely rinse this thing, and frankly, there's really not an ounce of rust on this thing at all whatsoever. And it's held up, and it's been fantastic. I can tell you David Rousey, you know, Jay Watkins, uh, a lot of these guys actually use Hookset because it really does have really good high quality performance. All right, so I'm gonna stand up, I'll show you how it fits and go from there, right? So, all right. So, right around the waist, comes through this, this buckle right here, come through and then you push and it clamps and stays on. So it's really almost like a spring tension. If you're ready to take it off, just pull it, boom, and it slides right off, right? So again, super simple. Now the thing about it is, and the one kind of, there's a couple of downfalls. So the first is the actual box sheath. I had to buy this separate. And 
in the spring summer I will add like an extra box of tails or something along those lines or anything maybe a couple extra top waters here's the deal though is you have to actually thread it on the, the belt itself and so it doesn't come off right so if I'm if I'm fumbling around back here I would have to slide the belt around I'll show you so once you get it on if if I'm fishing if I want to get in there, I gotta slide the belt around and then get into that, right? And then slide it back. Well, here's the problem. I often fish with two rods. So that's damn near impossible. So I'll really put just a break glass in case of emergency items back here uh, to get access to them, and that's about it. Uh, outside of that, everything else is on my wading lanyard, which I'll talk about here in a sec. All right. So the other thing, the other downfall uh, to this belt, and it's really just um, cosmetic at this point, but the plier sheath, right? So you can see in the middle right here, and I talked to Chris about this, actually there's two more things. So right here on the plier sheath, when you pull that up and then release your pliers, granted it's not on me, and you take them out, when you go to put them back in there, it's kind of a pain in the butt but that thing wants to get caught and it doesn't push them all down in there. So what I do is I pretty, I might just remove the damn thing after a while, but you slide it back in there. In short, it takes about, it takes two hands. Okay. The other thing is both D rings are on the bottom. I wish they had one more right here on the side and I'll show you why, because when you're putting your boga float down there, that's, that's hanging low in the water and your floats up here, right? And so when you need access to your float, you have to grab this and then kind of fish it back through and then you want to take it off, right? As opposed to if it was right here, it was kind of dangling right there and you could have quick access to it and then disengage uh, your boga float. But again, hook set marine gear, fantastic belt, fantastic, I mean, just, insanely good uh, quality stuff right here so if you're gonna invest again get the six inch it's gonna have um, the kind of back support that you need throughout the rest of the day it just again makes your wades that much more enjoyable so pop it on there have everything ready to go and uh, you're set so wade fishing belt that's the one I use hook set waiting gear all right so we talked about boots we talked about your belt. Now we're gonna start talking about kind of tackle setup. All right, so much like I just explained when talking about the belt, I have that pouch in the backside, again with a box of baits or a box of things that I would need, break glass in case of emergency. If I need access to it, I can, but it's not very easy to get to, but I have it if I need it. So I really have everything that I'm gonna throw in terms of tackle in my actual wade fishing box itself. I prefer the sling. I know a lot of people do not. I prefer the sling with the belt. Actually, a lot of people just actually wear the sling itself if they are wearing a, a wade fishing sling um, because there's really no need for a belt because again, everything that you need from, if you are carrying like a stringer um, from your bow float, you can put that here. There's so many D-rings on here. You can put it down here where it hangs low. You can even go even further. There's some more D-rings down there. Uh, again, it's out of your way. It's really everything that you need on your actual sling itself. But I still prefer the belt. Again, I prefer the belt, to, especially in the wintertime, to help kind of create a barrier uh, between the water and my waders and kind of protecting my core. Um, but in the spring, summer, I still wear it because I just carry a lot of stuff, right? I like my pliers there. Uh, I do have a plier sheath right here on this one. But again, I just, it, it's a, my routine. So I'll just stick to my routine. But I prefer this. This one's made by Feral Concepts. And so the good thing about these, and this is why I like using these in the spring, summer, winter, I'm sorry, spring, summer, uh, fall, is because now he's come out with a larger box style. So this is obviously a Plano, uh, but it's the larger box version of this. Um, and so the good thing about it is when Darren Jones 
uh, former Marine Darren Jones. Uh, these are good, high quality components. And so he knows the tactical components of things, right? As again, as a former Marine, you want to have, um, again, some efficiency. There's some tactical necessity for a lot of things that you use in a field. And so he's kind of taken that concept and brought it over to the wade fishing game. And so this is why I really like it. So I carry two boxes, not on me, but I'll have one more in the actual um, boat itself. I'll fish out of a solo skiff. It's more than what I need. Um, and so I'll just keep a spare set, a spare box. So this one's gonna have my soft plastics in it just for this time. Again, I'm throwing the whole shooting match. I, I still have some jerk baits. I have some top waters. I have some soft plastics. I have a lot of things because in the springtime, they can be very, very uh, unpredictable, right? And so I wanna be able to adjust with them. And so in my bigger box, I have more variety. If I need to, and I can go down and simplify my approach, I can go to a smaller box size, which just has a few things in there, right? Maybe a couple, a couple of tails, a couple of extra pair of jig heads, uh, a top water or two. Uh, it's not much, but it downsizes um, the things that I need. And so the good thing about it is, if I'm fishing and I wanna make that adjustment, if I know they're gonna be eating tails and I already have a small box of tails, I can lighten the load, if you will. And what you can do is, he's got these, these clips right here that come off the actual box itself. I can stow this away. I can take my smaller approach. I can clip these in. When I get back to the boat, whatever, but I have it ready to go because I pre-rigged it. And then now I can downsize whatever I have and I have again some kind of tactical utility, right? I can downsize whatever I'm um, going to go fish, right? So again, I like these boxes. Um, I like their versatility to them. I like the components to them. They're really good. I know they're flambeau boxes on the smaller ones and the bigger ones are going to be your Plano, uh, but those two, I typically have uh, one of each in the boat and ready to go with me. And so in the winter time though, I will go uh, to the stinky pants, wade fishing lanyard strap, if you will, all that stuff. Again, he has the larger, or, or actually uh, I've taken his lanyard and I put it on my own box. The reason I do that is because I'm predominantly fishing two types of baits. So much like I simplified my approach with a smaller box size, I still simplified my approach in the wintertime with a lot of corkies, mostly jerk baits, uh, but I have all of that in a much larger box size. And so now I know that's pretty much gonna be it. That's what I'm gonna use and then just go from there. Uh, and I still have some of the creature comforts. Again, the plier sheaths, your D-rings, all those stuff that you need. Uh, for like bogus and stuff like that. So again, boxes and wade box slings, I know they're not for everybody, but it's what I use. And that's the reason I have a couple of uh, options uh, for when I actually do go fishing. So again, consider spring, summer, maybe downsizing, uh, or if you wanna go to that two box option, never is a bad thing. Uh, reach out to, um, reach out to Darren over at Feral Concepts and get him set up. But again, he makes really, really good quality boxes. And uh, he do, he is, he actually is a sponsor uh, of a couple of things he's done for Old School October. So uh, just a great dude. Um, again, a uh, service member, a fellow service member. And so I like to show him some love, but also Jason at Stinky Pants makes a great product and they are sponsors as well. So giving you unbiased, feedback of what I use and why I use it. So next we'll talk about some of the other things that I carry on my person uh, when I'm wade fishing. Two more things. The first, it is the dumbest tool, um, but honestly, it's the best tool. Um, and that is a, basically a, a nipper lanyard. As crazy as that sounds, and I know there's a myriad of different ones that make them, I know Sims makes them, but you can take a, pan, a, a piece of 30 pound um, 
uh, this is I think 30 pound Andy monofilament and just thread some thread some beads on there because what you do is I just took like some, a barrel swivel there here I took a barrel swivel with one of those clasps here I think I made this stupid thing and I've had it for so long man uh, for a long god maybe a, a decade uh, but the best part about it is and the reason I like the beads frankly is because they slide they won't catch on anything right and so I can keep sliding them they won't catch I typically have and what I did is I staggered my nippers from my scissors on both sides that way if I need one or the other the weight of one or the other isn't going to counteract right so it's almost like wearing a necklace where it kind of sits as opposed if you had two of them on both sides now they're kind of trying to pull against each other so I'll either wade fish with one here or if I need my nippers if I'm tying a bait I'll just get on it from here it's long enough where I have some utility if I have to pick out a bird's nest in a reel um, or if I'm tying a leader and I'll get them waist deep I want to have a little bit more uh, length so it's not super long but it is a tool that you can make literally for like a dollar uh, and an extra piece of 30 pound monofilament and this thing will save your bacon uh, so many times so a couple of barrel swivels uh, I don't even know what those things are called um, but on a barrel swivel and then just connect those uh, to your nippers and to your scissors uh, and then you're set you can probably get a piece of paracord and kind of same thing um, but 30 pounds what I had at the time made it a decade ago and it's still rolling strong so I'm gonna keep rolling with that the second thing and I typically don't use it often I didn't use that at all last year um, and that's mainly because I didn't keep anything which is fine um, but I will have I will carry one now um, almost all the time last year I didn't carry one at all but it's a stringer um, stinky pennant stringer this I believe I want to say is the 10 foot and I prefer if I am keeping a few um, if I'm making the decision to keep a few I will keep them on a small float right not the big float where's my boga grip so this is the 15 pound boga float this is the really this is the small size and I'll tell you why uh, if I am deciding to keep a few or harvest a few, I want to make sure that they're staying alive as long as possible, right? Um, and so with the smaller float, if I'm sticking them, uh, going from top down, so inside the mouth down through the bottom of the jaw, through that little paper part right there in the bottom part of the jaw, now what happens is this float is so light that fish can swim underwater and not feel the buoyancy so much of them pulling back to the surface and it basically um, killing that fish because it'll roll that fish now the fish kind of has control over the actual stringer itself and so he stays or she stays a lot longer stays alive a lot longer and so if i decide to harvest a few i just bring them back um, basically to the ice chest and throw them on ice and, and they're good to go so uh, that's why I use a smaller boga float, but again, I use the, the 10 foot, 8 or 10 foot, I can't remember, uh, stinky pants stringer, if I decide to keep a few. Um, that's rare, to be honest with you, uh, but I do carry one because last year I had one that was actually hooked from another lure, um, and it was down in the throat. So it was a lure that somebody else had broken off, and I caught that fish, and I have a picture of it, um, and what happened is, is that lure was lodged like in the top back part of the throat and so I didn't want to pull that lure out and I was hoping that fish would pass it uh, but I also I caught the fish right and so if I had my stringer I would have harvested that fish because it was a um, basically like a hybrid swim bait uh, that was way down to the throat so um, you know I just want to have the ability to harvest if something, if I do hook a, a fish in a bad spot, gut hook it, uh, pull out gill rakers or something along those lines. Um, it's irresponsible in my opinion uh, to go ahead and 
um, release those fish knowing, uh, especially after having those conversations with Dr. Greg Stuns and, and many of the team, that if you do a lot of damage to the gills in the gill area, they're bleeding really profusely from those gills, the chances of those fish making it are very, very slim. And so if you're gonna harvest any, harvest those fish, and uh, I typically have a stringer on to do that. So um, those are the last two tools, if you will. I do not wade fish with a net. I do not wade fish with a net at all. Um, the main reason I don't, it's big, it's bulky, it gets in the way more often than not. And um, honestly, I've lost more fish trying to net a large fish than just letting that fish kind of play out and then grabbing that fish or using my boga uh, to secure that fish. Um, they're much more efficient. I just take my time a lot more. Um, and then honestly, they just get in the way. So if I'm wade fishing or walking back to the boat, it's just always in the way. Um, even if I'm fighting a fish, it's floating where that fish is running. And so now it's just in the way. So I don't use a net. I don't use a net at all. I'd prefer to hand grab them or use a boga grip. Um, let's see, the last thing is like the forever last. And I know uh, Hook Set makes a, those kind of live well bags. I have used the forever last one. The reason I used the forever last one, to be honest, was I would actually just tote this thing around, which would be where I can go ahead and capture some of that content out there uh, because it was just too bulky to fit in my kind of wade fishing setup. And so I would carry that stuff uh, on me in, in one of those live well bags. And I had the utility too, if I did gut hook a fish or kill a fish or something along those lines, but I just don't like doing it. And so now I just keep my phone in my actual chest pocket if I have something or come into an emergency or something along those lines, and then I'll have my actual uh, stringer set up because wade fishing, in my opinion, the more, I'm sorry, the less you have is more. Uh, you gain in terms of efficiency and less things that you could have go wrong. If you minimize your approach and you can kind of downsize the things that you have and simplify your wade fishing setup, you will be 100% more efficient. Bring in, again, all these different totes out there and things that can kind of get in your way, it's, it's a nightmare. So downsize it. All I have is a good pair of boots, a great wading belt, a wade fishing sling box, and then a pair of nippers and a stringer just in case, and a boga grip, that's it and a bow grip, that's it. So hopefully you found this helpful. I know this is somewhat of a long one, but I got a lot of questions on uh, my wade fishing setup. And so I wanted to share that with you and hopefully that'll help you kind of get yourself uh, and things in order as you go and enjoy the wet wading season this year. So again, maybe for winter time, we can go through all the base layers and other things that I wear for a you know, really good, efficient time, a good safe time in the water during winter wade season. Uh, but for spring, summer, if you just have these simple things, you will make yourself way more efficient and have a really good time. So again, if you enjoy this type of contact content, um, certainly leave a like, subscribe to the channel, uh, do all that stuff. We just want to provide, you know, and hopefully these have been helpful. So again, certainly leave us a comment for sure. Uh, definitely represent our brand. So um, Trash Cat Coffee, they've been more than gracious enough to sponsor this uh, grind series. So Trash Cat Coffee, definitely look them up. Their link's down in the description. Um, and also uh, K Wigglers as well. So thanks to Wayne and Larry uh, over at K Wigglers for letting us get this grind series out to you and produce this type of content. So. Hey, maybe leave a comment in the description about what you would want to see on the next grind episode and we'll get back to it. But until then, tight lines, God bless, and always remember, take what you need and release the rest. God bless.